Jumpers, a play by Dave Andrew. What the hell are you doing? If you think you can talk me down, forget it. Uh, I'm not here to talk you down. I, I, I didn't even know you were here. What are you doing here then? Throwing myself off. But you can't. Really? Why is that then? Because this is my roof. Go and find your own. No. The bloody liberty. Look, there are thousands of rooftops in London. Most have a much nicer view than this. Why don't you come and jump off one of them? Why don't you? Because I've chosen to throw myself off of this one. Well, so have I. But you can't. It isn't fair. What do you mean, it isn't fair? I was here first. And? That makes it my roof. I claim the right to throw myself off of it. Fine. You go first and I'll follow. I'm not jumping whilst you're here. Well, then I'll go first. No, you won't. Look, this is my roof, OK? Those people down there are here to see me jump, not you. So just go away. <laughs> no, I'm not going anywhere. Oh, bloody hell. Stubborn woman. Would it take long to, you know? Shouldn't think so. A few seconds, tops. Do you, do you think we'll die before we hit the ground? How the hell should I know? It's not as if I've done this before. Why? Uh, why what? Why are you doing this? <laughs> reasons. Oh, reasons. Okay. Well, what about you? The same. Still, picked a nice day for it. <laughs> yeah, very pleasant. <sighs> Maybe it'd be better if it was raining. It'd make things easier then. <laughs> Look at that crowd down there. All of them showing such great concern, but secretly hoping that one of us does it. Gruesome bastards. Now look, <laughs> please, fire brigade, ambulance service. We must be very special people to warrant such attention. London's come to a complete standstill and it's all for us. Is this what you have to do to get somebody to listen to you? Is this what it takes? Well, people are too busy with their own problems to have to worry about yours as well. Some of us have already lent upon too much as it is, never allowed to have lives of our own. A little woman at home, mums, doormats. We're not people anymore. Forget all the aspirations you had when you were young. All those wasted years spent at college. They all count for nothing in the end. I, I don't know who I am anymore. I just have to be there when I'm needed, but who can I turn to when I need somebody? From the moment I get up in the morning, it's mum this and mum that, or Rita fetch, Rita carry, clean, wash, iron, soap, cook. Is that all I am? A domestic slave? Just once it'd be nice for someone to do something for me. Put your feet up, Rita. I'll cook dinner tonight, Rita. Thank you for all you do, Rita. I mean, is that unreasonable? Am, am I just being selfish? No. I don't think so. Still, what do you care? You don't even want me in the same roof as you. Sorry. I was working towards a degree, you know? I could have really made something of myself. I even had letters after my name. But no. Not me, not dependable old Rita. She's just the little woman at home. Toss her a dog biscuit now and again and sit her in the corner. She'll be all right. Well, she won't. I'm sick of being taken for granted. 
I'm I am a person. I'm not just a, a wife and a mother. I'm, I'm a person as well. I have needs. I have things that I I still want to achieve. But well, men never take women seriously, do they? They just think it's funny to pass derogatory remarks whenever we're in company. Why do you think that's acceptable? Not all men are the same, Rita. Ha! Look, TV cameras have arrived. You wouldn't have a comb on you by any chance. Well, I've told you my story. I mean, you haven't even told me your name. Paul. My name's Paul. Why are you doing this then, Paul? What, what's your story? I lost my wife a little while ago. Hit and run. It was the result of the inquest today. Do you know they let the little bastard walk? The stupidity of the British judicial system is beyond words. They dropped the death by dangerous driving charge and concluded there was no case to answer. He's free to go straight back behind the wheel and wipe somebody else's family out. Paul, love. I'm so sorry. Well, that fine institution, the CPS, don't understand is that two people were killed by that car on the Monday night in August. It was a lovely warm evening. Driving conditions were perfect. There was no excuse other than he was driving too fast. Problem is, nobody could prove it. That he killed my wife was surely as putting a gun to her head and putting the trigger. <laughs> Carol and I did everything together, shared everything including cooking and domestic chores. I'd wear my pinny all day, every day, if I could only have her back. All I wanted was justice, that's all. Just good old fashioned justice, but they've let him walk free. He's taken my world from me and yet he gets to go unpunished. Ha! His family thought that I was the villain for taking their little boy to court in the first place. He was 17 when he killed her, driving around in a three-litre BMW, which was obviously too powerful for him. When they read out the verdict, his family cheered. Can you believe it? Worse than that, the arrogant little bastard smiled at me and winked. In the end, I was the one being threatened with contempt of court. What kind of messed up world is this, for Christ's sake? You must have loved her very much. I still do, Rita. She may be gone from my life, but she lives on within my heart. She always will. She's very lucky to have a man who loves her as much as you did. Do. Do you have children together? We were never that blessed, unfortunately. Well, maybe that's a good thing. I mean, you'll not have to struggle to bring them up as a single parent. What a horrible thing to say. I'm sorry? I would have loved to have had children with her. She would live on within them. Part of her would always be alive. Believe me, it would not have been a struggle. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to offend you. I, I just thought... I told you, that... Rita. Not all men are the same. Yeah, I'm starting to see that now. If you go through with this, how do you think your family is going to feel? Yeah. I doubt they'll even care. Oh, they'd be angry with me, I suppose. They'd have to do all the things themselves for the change. Let me ask you something. When you first got together, did you establish any ground rules? Ground rules? Yeah. Things like who should be responsible for what, what you expect from each other, what you don't expect from each other, you know, that sort of thing. Well... Of course we didn't. So you just assumed that everything would be hunky-dory and that he'd anticipate your needs without you telling him what they were? Oh, I, I, I don't follow you. He didn't take your identity away, Rita. Not without help from you, anyway. You took on the role of homemaker, running around after him and making sure that he was always well catered for, that the house was clean and tidy, his dinner was always prepared and that there was always a clean shirt hanging in the wardrobe. You set the precedent. He didn't. <laughs> Men rarely do. As time went on, it began to annoy you that he would sit there reading his paper while you were busy doing the chores. But still, you never said anything. You just let the anger build. Am I right? Well, I, I didn't mind so much back then. 
But I thought he'd help out once more of the children were born. Did you ask him to? Uh, I didn't think I'd need to. Well, there you go, assuming things again. You've never asked him before. Why should he feel compelled to give you help then? Well, he could see how tired I was. I mean, surely he'd not have needed telling. The pattern of any relationship is fashioned in the early years together. He's always seen his role as the provider and left the business of the home to you. <laughs> it may be an outdated concept now, but it dates back to caveman times. Unless you tell him, he won't understand. Yeah, well, he'll not have to worry about it for much longer, will he? <laughs> Earlier on, you asked me if I thought you were being selfish. I fully believe that you have good reason to feel angry and frustrated. But I also think that you have to carry a lot of the blame on your own shoulders for that. It seems to me that you talk, you just don't communicate. <laughs> he never listens, you mean? Well, maybe not. I don't know him, do I? But I do know men and women in general. <laughs> you sometimes give us far too much credit for knowing why you're upset with us. But we seldom do. We're quite simple creatures at heart. Sometimes it's just easier to tell us what's on your mind rather than let us guess. Yeah, well, you should. Have you always been a coward, Rita? I beg your pardon? Well, if you go through this, you're nothing more than a coward. It'd be so much easier for you to make this grand statement rather than actually tell him how you're feeling. How dare you judge me? You, you don't know me. You, you have no right. Why it's don't you just do it then, Rita? Go on. Get on with it. All your problems will be over with one small step. Unlike that of your shattered husband, who will wonder for the rest of his life what he did to make you do this. Or the children who will face ridicule in the playground and hear all the adults whispering about how sad it was that their mummy got ill and jumped off of a roof. But never mind, eh? At least you'll be spared all of that. Stop it! What are you waiting for, Rita? Go on! Do it! Just stop it! Stop it! Carol would be disgusted with me for even contemplating this. She'd want me to go on and live for both of us. And so that's exactly what I'm going to do. This is your roof, Rita. Congratulations. I yield to you. Goodbye, Rita. You've been listening to Jumpers, a short play written and directed by Dave Andrew and produced in association with Upstage Surrey. The role of Rita was played by Mills Ross and the role of Paul was played by Dave Andrew. With special thanks to Karen Buchanan for distribution and to Dave O'Rorty for editing. Sound effects were provided by BBC Sound Lab and also Zapsplat. We thank you for listening. <laughs>